Well, we're still at Fort Roberto, and if you've not done so already, we have done a retracing history episode on the history of this lead mine fort. Be sure to check that out. But let's head over to their museum. Now, it's a small-scale museum. They don't have a lot of exhibits, but on the second floor, which I guess is truly the main floor in the barn, look what they got. They got an original Conestoga wagon. Now, I was not expecting to see this, so I didn't get as good video and photos as I would have liked to, but nevertheless, let's take a peek. This is why we aren't going to paint it. See those tally marks? Oh. Oh, wow. Yeah. And they're all over the place. Up here, over here, over here. <laughs> they're all over. And do we have a rough idea what the tally marks are? Yes. Like to? It's how many Indians they killed. No, no, no. <laughs> it's how many barrels they were carrying because Conestoga wagons didn't carry people, they carried goods. There's no way we could paint over this. No. You know, you don't want to. Now, this is the brake, and the person who was driving the Conestoga wagon did not sit in the front. He sat right here. <laughs> this is called the lazy board, and it was handy because there's the brake. And I always call this the glove compartment. <laughs> but all of this uh, is original. Uh, what's isn't is of course the canvas top. The canvas top would have, of course, uh, rotted away, or you know, would have been in pretty bad shape. But uh, this was originally in the Altoona or Blair County uh, Historical Society. But since Blair County wasn't founded until 1840ish, it didn't apply to them because these were around 1790, and uh, they just had it in a barn, so they gave it to us. Well, when I started working here in 2008, it was sitting in that corner, all apart, disassembled. So we had a very proactive treasurer who was on our, on our board of directors, and he says, we gotta start displaying that. So that's why we started displaying it. And when you think about this wood here is 200 plus years old, you know, in order to bend those uh, ribs, they had to uh, water log them and then bend them. So just, just amazing. And this right here is a jack because if you got a broken wheel, you'd have to jack up the wagon and put a new one on. And this is a uh, grease pot because you wanted to grease yeah. your wheel uh, before you put on there. And the thing in the back is a feed wagon where after they stopped for the day, they would uh, be able to feed the horses that pulled this. Uh, this was pulled by six horses. This shows you where the driver sat. And then where's your steering wheel in your car? Left side. Yeah. <laughs> now, sometimes he'd ride on one of the horses, but you know they didn't ride in the, in the wagon. So if you ever see a wagon that has a seat in the front. That's not a conserved wagon, that's a covered wagon. And uh, uh, I think this thing says that they could, is it 10,000 pounds? Yeah, they could haul 10,000 pounds. And you know how the sides of it are kind of like an arc? And the common perception most people say is it's because it could float. Well, there's a better reason, and that is, if that's loaded with barrels, if you're going uphill, your barrels won't fall out yeah. the back, and if you're going downhill, your barrels won't fall out the front. So, makes sense, makes sense. Once again, I'd like to thank Rick for taking part in these videos the past few weeks on Readout Productions. Be sure to visit Fort Robodeau in central Pennsylvania. It's about nine miles north of Altoona, Pennsylvania. It is worth the trip.